welcome to the Heartification Podcast, where I interview people on how art has affected their lives and what it means to them. Art has a very special place in my life. It not only makes me feel happy, but it allows me to make others feel special. This podcast is all about how art has made an impact on others' lives for all ages, all backgrounds, and all walks of life. You can find more about this podcast guest in my show notes. Without further ado, let's welcome my next guest. She is a watercolor illustrator and artist. Please look my next guest, Volta Voloshin Smith. Hi, Avni. So happy to be here. Yeah, thank you so much for doing this. Um, so the first question I always ask is how do you define art? How do I define art? Oh, I would say, I mean, there's so many ways to define art, but I think my favorite way would be to, I define art as a way to express yourself. So it's just um, an avenue for either observing someone expressing themselves or you yourself participating in that self-expression. Yeah, definitely. That's like my exact um, kind of definition. My definition is any form you're able to express yourself. Yeah, yeah. And it's, and it's so powerful. I, I, I just, you know, huge fan. <laughs> yeah, it's me too. And what art forms are you exposed to? Uh, let's see. I guess movies, uh, lots of movies, music, um, a lot of watercolor art, because that's my specialty. Um, and then I also try, you know, now it's a little bit more difficult to visit museums, but I do love uh, just taking the time to kind of visit and, and experience other forms, um, you know, of art that that you can find in a museum, like sculptures and um, like 3D kind of elements. Um, but yeah, I would say I'd say those are kind of de- de- so definitely around um, kind of television and music type of art and books I guess (laughs) yeah it's awesome and what inspired you to start painting with watercolors uh let's see I so I actually didn't go to art school I'm self-taught my experience is in marketing and business um my parents when we immigrated uh from Moldova in 2002 um well like having immigrant parents they're always you know trying to kind of guide me into uh taking a, a path that was more like secure you know like where you can have a go to college get a degree you have a like a secure job type of stuff so you know I, I try to follow that for a while um but eventually like I've always just loved to draw so I always wanted to do something creative on the side uh and so a few years ago I found myself like I was going to school full time was getting my MBA and then I was working full time, but I just was craving something creative. Like my brain was so much into the analytical, like all the finance classes and whatnot. So I just wanted something that was like, give me, give me paint. (laughs) And I uh, just happened upon a watercolor set. I was totally random. I have never really um, explored that medium before, but I thought, well, it's, you know, it's a small palette, you open it up and I can just start painting like that's at the time because I was I didn't have a lot of free time because I had homework and no social life. Um, but finding that watercolor palette being so approachable, I, I was hooked. I was like, this is awesome. I don't have to because like I, I've done art before, but it was a lot of acrylic uh, paints. And so, you know, you have to prep, you have to like uh get an apron on, prepare your area. Like there's a lot of steps that you should probably take before, (laughs) before painting, because it could get really messy and then it's hard to like get rid of that mess. Um, Whereas with watercolors, I love the idea that you can just open the palette, start painting. And then when you're done, you close it and it's like, that's it. So that's kind of the long story of how I got into watercolors specifically. Yeah, definitely. That's amazing. And when you are painting, are you able to express yourself? Yeah, yeah, I would say definitely. Um, I paint a lot of foods. That's kind of my um, specialty. I love to 
create animations um, along with those watercolor paintings. But at the same time, I also like uh, to do very loose watercolors. So they're not, so I, I would say like uh, professionally, no, I do food illustration. But as far as like art, just for me, I like to do it like very loose and playful style just because um, it's it's such a difference from like painting, you know, having more control over painting a type of food because you you, you want to, you know, convey the the right type of um, image across, you know, so people understand, yes, this is this is a sandwich <laughs> kind of thing. Um, but I I love expressing myself really um through just like loose brush strokes that are kind of kind of like abstract landscapes um i just find that that kind of like free form like really helps me um unwind and just you know like feel feel really happy yeah definitely it's awesome and sometimes instead of you know like painting kind of set things like as you're saying the foods you sometimes just need to like just paint just do whatever yeah yeah exactly because you know I, I do a lot of work for uh, clients and I'm super grateful that I have the opportunity to but at the same time like I, I think it's really important to also do art that is just for yourself that no one else gets to see you know you could share it if you want to but if there's like no other purpose for it just for it to be like out of your soul kind of thing like I think that's so powerful because it just again like helps us express ourselves right like whatever we're feeling going through it just it's such a nice medium to do that yeah definitely that's awesome and is there a particular thing that made you attracted to watercolor painting yeah uh well for one thing you know it's like i mentioned before it's the versatility or like i guess how easy it is to get started with you know making some art because it's so you just open the palette and go um, but I also loved the like the very soft, flowy nature of watercolors because you get to use water. You know, you can you can control it if you want, but it's so fun to you know add more water and kind of like tilt the paper and watch it, you know, do its thing. The, the pigments interacting with each other. I just find that so soothing. I guess I, I love being around water and. I live in Dallas, Texas. There's, I mean, there's some lakes here, but not, not any like large bodies of water. So I feel like uh, through watercolors that, that kind of like satisfies my, my love for, you know, being around water a little bit in a very small way, but yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. And um, how do you think art can help people? It's uh, a very good question. I like I'm convinced that art can heal. Um, I've seen it, you know, I've seen it in so many ways in myself and in others. And I have also like read so many different studies where um, people were saying that, you know, just the act of creating art doesn't matter whether someone is skilled or not, they still felt the benefit of it. And, um, like it, it lowers the cortisol levels. There's just so, so much good, good stuff that happens whenever we engage ourselves. Cause I just from like a personal perspective, I, whenever I feel anxious or nervous, I uh, try to do something with my hands. Like I feel like painting is allows us to like get out of our heads and onto the paper. And it just, you know, it's one of those ways that you can either bring more peace into your life or heal through whatever like difficult situation, whatever's happening. It's just a nice way to kind of, again, maybe not like you can acknowledge whatever thoughts you're having, but at the same time, you can work through them with art. I feel like it, it allows for kind of like that self-expression um, instead of just keeping it all like bottled up. Yeah, definitely. And I totally agree with you. And that takes us right to our next question. Um, so art can be therapeutic and it can help people express themselves. So has art ever helped you through a difficult situation? And can you give an example? Yes, absolutely. So um, for one thing, definitely in the pandemic, it's helped me with my anxiety because I, I stumbled upon this uh, practice called Enzo Circles. Are you familiar with that? Never heard of him. Uh, it's spelled E-N-S-O, and it comes from um, Japanese Buddhism, Zen Buddhism, where the, 
basically the idea is you take a deep breath and you, as you're, as you're exhaling, you're painting a circle with a brush. So it's traditionally done with sumi ink, but I love watercolors. So I thought that would be such a, you know, fun take modern take on it on this beautiful practice. And, um, that that idea alone like prompted me to create a whole cl class on a series of combining like breathing along with art movements and uh because i i saw that on myself like i was experiencing anxiety you know things were changing in the world like crazy stuff happening um but i kept coming back to this practice and i found that it really was helping me feel a lot more calm um, so that's why I wanted to, you know, that's why I created a class because I wanted to share it with others um, because this is a, a very <laughs> difficult and challenging time for a lot of us. So every little bit helps. Um, yeah, so that's that's just like one example. Um, another quick one that I, 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 I can also share is um, so a few months ago, um, my my sweet cat. Uh, passed away and it was, a, it was a really sad really sad moment um but i i found that um creating art especially art that you know like painting portraits of him because for some reason i've never done that before while he was alive but um just using this art form of like expressing myself but capturing him in a way that you know makes me <laughs> kind of makes makes me feel um really happy in in like remembering those like special moments that i had with him um so yeah i would definitely say like that that was a, a huge like kind of healing opportunity um because like i got to you know think back on the sadness but at the same time also view it from like art helped me see it from a different perspective you know it's not just like he's gone he's not here anymore but at the same time it's like but i I can create art that can kind of continue to live on, you know? Yeah, definitely. That's awesome. And are you attracted to any particular artist? Um, that's, that's a very difficult question because I have so many artists that I like. Um, one that kind of comes to mind uh, would be Ana Victoria Calderon. She's a Mexican watercolor artist. And she's been someone that I've admired for a long time. She does like very beautiful um, kind of spiritual inspired art of, that combines nature and like spiritual elements. Um, and she's also uh, done lots of workshops. So she's inspired me to kind of start sharing my love of watercolors with others. Um, so I guess like if I had to pick someone like right now that's she's um, kind of uh, a role model for me in that sense. Yeah, definitely. That's awesome. And are you attracted to any particular art form? Um, I mean, I would say watercolors. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and as far as like art form, I guess, like watercolor still lives, I really lo love those. I think they're um, really fun and special to do. And there's the food element to it. Um, so yeah, I would say, say watercolor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And my heartification project is all about giving back to the community, specifically to those with disabilities and illnesses. So how do you give back to the community? Yeah, I actually donate a portion of my uh, profits to Donors Choose. Have you heard of, of them? I don't think so. So they're um, a really cool organization where uh, teachers like from local schools all over the country, they can go on there and create a project of like something that they need in their classrooms. Mm. And so um, you, you can kind of like sponsor, you know, one of those, pro like donate to sponsor a project. And what I really loved about, what I really love about just participating in that is it's really cool. Like once the project gets funded, you get an email, like, um, you know, the teacher with the children, like getting, getting all the supplies that they need. And one time I even got, it was like, it was so absolutely touching, but um, there were maybe like 10 kids in, in a elementary school and they all wrote like little small, um, like artful messages um, saying thanks for, you know, the support that um, 
I contributed and it's oh my gosh it's it's so sweet. Sweet. I just I, I love the I just love the idea of like being able to to see it so tangibly like because a lot of times like you can contribute to a charity um, and you don't necessarily like see the exact impact whereas with donors choose like it's almost I mean instant like within weeks uh, you'll hear back from the teacher and they'll let you know that hey the project is funded and we got all the supplies that we needed and I just I, I don't know I, I love that in such a such a cool way of um, connecting to the local community and I, I try to support mostly local projects because I you know I live in Dallas I want to support local schools and education initiatives that support arts in any way that I can yeah definitely even in my um organization I had a pop-up event where the people with disabilities and illnesses came in came to paint and there um there was this one guy um named Carl and he has Parkinson's disease so his left arm was shaking so he had his canvas and his paints and um I was like right next to him and he's like hey watch what I'm gonna do so he started to like you know put his paintbrush onto the canvas and his left arm started to like slowly stop shaking and he's like this is what your event is doing for me and I want to thank you you know for like doing this and you're affecting so many people and it just made me so happy to actually see the effect of like my actions yeah oh my gosh that's so special oh it's that's, yeah it's that, so that gave me chills the, thank you for sharing this story that is yeah that's super special yeah it's awesome when you can actually witness the effect yeah. that you're you're making yeah yeah absolutely yeah definitely and how would you like people to get in touch with you uh let's see people can get in touch with me um on instagram or on my website so i'm my company's called color snack um that's i'm um, at color snack on instagram and then color snack.com for my website so that's that's where you'll find all the information about me awesome well thank you so much for being on my podcast Thank you so much for having me, Avni. It's such a pleasure. Yeah, thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you, you too. Thank you for listening to this podcast. Remember, if you want to find out more about this guest, please go to my show notes where I have all the links needed. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe to my podcast series and help me by sharing it, leaving a rating, and a comment. I hope you join me on my next podcast. Bye for now.